Welcome back to my channel. I'm Robin Clevett. I'm just up here doing a little bit of preparation for another piece of work that I'm just about to do. And in conjunction with Ironmongery Direct, yes, the big supplier that we all know and love, I'm doing a little bit to highlight the importance of apprenticeships. And I've got four questions that have been posed to me and I'd like to answer those questions, in my opinion, of what I feel about apprentices and apprenticeships. And as I say, this is part of a wider campaign by Ironmongery Direct looking into the importance of apprenticeships. So, I've made a note of these questions. I'm gonna read the questions out to you and we'll look at them. So, how do I feel about apprenticeships? For example, how important are they and do I think that they're difficult to find? So, I can remember finding my own apprenticeship back in the 80s, and it was particularly difficult then too. There were some large firms employing apprenticeships. Some of the big construction firms actually had their own joinery departments, and they employed carpenters as apprentices. But since um, times have changed and the whole structure of construction has moved on, that isn't so common these days. And I know that when I had to find my apprenticeship, I had to phone, use the yellow pages, and literally that was an old phone book, and go through the phone book and call and ask people would they be prepared to take on an apprenticeship, or an apprentice, sorry. So um, that was pretty difficult. I don't think things have changed that much now. So um, how, I, how do I feel about apprenticeships now? I would say that I think it is absolutely fundamental to the survival of craft that apprenticeships remain because it's good and well doing a um, college-based education but in our industry everything generally happens either in a joinery shop or on site and so that experience that you get from working alongside time-served tradespeople is totally invaluable. So I think that apprenticeships are absolutely, how can I put it, crucial to the survival of craft and the industry and maintaining good building standards. So question two, the second question is, what is my experience with apprentices? Well, I'm super proud to say that in the time I've been working, I left college there was a recession, there wasn't a lot of employment. This is in the late 1980s, early 1990s. I had to go self-employed. I was lucky enough to um, make a few contacts to get a little bit of work. Then I started getting too much work that I could handle. So I bought in the skills of other carpenters on a self-employed basis. And then I had the opportunity to help someone else learn a trade. So it was kind of like, how did I go about it? Well. I approached um, the college where I went and I said, is there anyone looking for an apprenticeship? And through that contact with the college, I was able to pick an apprentice up. His name was Carl. He went on to have an amazing career, still has an amazing career. He works in Norway where he now lives and the work he does is unbelievable. So it gives me a lot of satisfaction. Now that was just one of probably a dozen guys that came through with me on apprenticeships all the way through my career, I've had people working with me and I am a strong believer in doing it, sharing the knowledge. As you know, if you're an avid viewer of my channel, I believe in sharing knowledge. Um, so yes, I do think it's super, super important. Right, so that's my experience to say, I've done a lot with other guys and taught a lot of people the trade. Well, okay, can I give any advice to people looking to hire an apprentice? Okay, so I would say that if you're looking to hire an apprentice, that you'd probably want to go and speak to some of the government basic, the training organisations, because with their help, you may be able to receive grants, which could uh, help towards training them, because it does take time to train someone. You know, you've got to physically stop, explain, teach, and sometimes that will slow the work down. 
So the Construction Industry Training Board is the organisation umbrella that I was underneath. I was on a youth training scheme, so they were the two working in conjunction with each other. Uh, I, don't, I know the, job tr uh, the youth training scheme doesn't exist. The CITB still very much exists, and I do know that they are the people who encourage um, training and they want to give out grants and that sort of stuff. So I'm not an expert on the schemes that they have in place, but I do think it's worth a look at the CITB and see if there's any frameworks that could fit your business. I do know that there are some generous grants available if you're prepared to take someone on and give them an apprenticeship. So, moving on, can I give any advice to people looking for an apprenticeship? Well, this is probably the hardest one of all, and you know, especially if you're young, you know, you're out, if you finish your school, maybe your O-levels or A-levels, whatever you call them nowadays, GCSEs, and you're looking to find an apprenticeship, and you go onto the internet, and you start searching because that's where we all go to look for anything and you find you can't actually find anything. Now that's not uncommon because large firms don't generally advertise the fact they're looking for apprenticeships in the building trade and the term apprentice is widely used in industry now in all sectors from supermarkets to accountancy firms. They also use the term apprentice which in my personal opinion has diluted the, um, the meaning, what I felt apprenticeship or apprentice was, it was someone who did something maybe with their hands, a craft, a skill, something that you couldn't sit down and learn in a classroom, for example, like accountancy. Um, and so it's confusing. It's definitely more difficult. I think that you need to speak to the CITB, go to the local technical colleges, look at their schemes for training, try to enroll on a scheme, and in conjunction with that, talk to local firms and say, I want to become a carpenter joiner or a bricklayer, or whatever it is that takes your fancy and say that I'm going to go to college. Would you be able to offer me an apprenticeship? And so you have to put a little bit of legwork in. In fact, you have to put a lot of legwork in. Now I get a lot of email from people who are wanting to come into the trade, who are in the trade and they want to improve and go to college and learn a trade and become an apprentice. And it's really difficult for me sometimes because it's heartbreaking because I'd like to help absolutely everybody, but I just can't, I just can't physically do it other than making a video and saying that I'm gonna share some skills with you. So I do think it's really hard, but with the new T levels that are coming out um, and trying to make more schools look at vocational as opposed to academic, I think that we are gonna make some headway in the future. And also my aim with the organizations that I'm working alongside is to try and streamline this process, encourage builders like me and carpenters, maybe small firms of the benefit of having someone young to, to work with you and learn the trade. You know, it's another pair of hands and all the rest of it. So I think there's a lot of work to do, but between us as a community, I think we can probably do it going forward. It's just a matter of getting ourselves organized, making sure that the framework works for everyone. It works for the apprentice and for the firm. And we've just got to try and do something about it because guys, it's down to us to maintain the standard of construction in the United Kingdom and protect it for the future forevermore. So I'd like to congratulate Ironmongery Direct for their initiative. I think it's fantastic that they have um, done this or taken it upon themselves to look at training in the construction industry. I'm fully behind it. And if you've got any questions about this um, and apprenticeships, leave them in the comments box down below. And even if you can answer some of those questions as well, so if you are from the CITV, you're watching this, please use the comments to answer the questions from our community who watch these videos. And that would be super, super helpful. So in the meantime, my name's Robin Clevett. Thanks for watching me and joining me on my channel. I'll catch you all again soon.